Our journey through the epochs of our origins now brings us to a different kind of world. From the rugged hills of Kenya, we travel north to the lush, ancient woodlands of what will one day be the Afar region of Ethiopia. Here, some four and a half million years ago, in a world that was wetter and greener than it is today, lived a creature that stands as a profound testament to the complex, experimental nature of our evolution. This is Ardipithecus ramidus, and its discovery has forced us to fundamentally rethink how our ancestors first began to walk on two legs. This is Ancient Africa Chronicles, a voyage back in time to uncover stories from the cradle of humankind. If you find yourself captivated by these glimpses into our deep past, please show your support by liking this video and subscribing for more explorations into Africa's extraordinary history. In this episode, we will uncover the secrets of the first tree dweller in Africa, exploring the remarkable fossil that is rewriting the story of human evolution. The modern landscape of the Middle Awash Valley, a parched and arid expanse, holds secrets buried for millions of years. It was here, in the 1990s, that an international team of scientists led by Dr. Tim White made a monumental discovery. After painstaking excavation, they unearthed what is arguably the most important hominin fossil since the famous Lucy, a partial yet remarkably complete skeleton of a female hominin. They named her Ardi. The preparation and analysis of Ardi's skeleton was a project of immense scale, taking over 15 years. The fossil was so fragile and its bones so fragmented that a team of specialists had to work with microscopic precision to piece her together. The result of their tireless work was a breathtakingly detailed portrait of a creature that lived a million years before the famous Australopiths, providing us with an unprecedented snapshot of a crucial, long-lost chapter in our history. At an estimated four feet tall and weighing around 110 pounds, Hardy had a small brain, comparable in size to that of a modern chimpanzee. But the rest of her body tells a story of intriguing contradictions. Let's begin with her hands and feet. Her fingers and toes were long and curved, clear adaptations for grasping branches. Her wrists and shoulder joints were flexible, perfectly suited for clambering and climbing through the forest canopy with ease. It is clear that for a significant part of her life, Ardi was at home in the trees. Her survival depended on her ability to forage for food and escape predators high above the forest floor. But the most revolutionary insights come from the lower half of her skeleton. The most extraordinary discovery was her pelvis. While not identical to our own, it was wide and short, shaped in a way that would have allowed her to support her upper body weight over her hips, a hallmark of bipedal walking. This suggests that she was capable of walking upright on the ground. And yet, her foot presented an astonishing paradox. Unlike a human foot, which has an arch and a big toe aligned with the others, to provide a powerful push-off. Ardi's foot possessed a large, divergent big toe that splayed out to the side like a thumb. This feature would have been a perfect tool for grasping branches, allowing her to move with great agility through the trees. However, 
it would have made walking on the ground clumsy and slow. It is a stunning example of evolutionary compromise, a body with a dual nature, perfectly suited for a life lived between two worlds. Ardi's unique anatomy allows us to imagine her daily life. She would have spent her days in the forest, foraging for fruits, leaves, nuts, and perhaps small animals. When moving between food patches, she could have descended from the trees to walk upright on the ground. This form of movement would have been far more energy efficient than knuckle walking, which is how chimpanzees move. It is the perfect adaptation for an environment that was a mosaic of dense woodlands and more open tree-line corridors. The presence of reduced canine teeth in both males and females of her species also suggests a fundamental shift in social behaviour. Large, dagger-like canines in many primates are a tool for male-on-male -male aggression and competition for mates. Their reduction in Ardipithecus hints at a more cooperative social structure, perhaps with less intra-group conflict. This shift away from aggression towards cooperation may have been a vital step in the development of the complex social bonds that define our own species. The discovery of Ardipithecus provides a crucial missing link, but not in the way many people expected. It tells us that our last common ancestor with chimpanzees likely did not look like a modern chimpanzee. Instead, that common ancestor may have been a creature with a blend of ape and human-like traits, a body and behavior similar to Ardi's, adapted for a life in the trees while also possessing the capability for bipedal movement. Ardipithecus is not simply a straight line on our family tree. It is a major branch, showing that the story of becoming human was a complex, multifaceted process. It reminds us that evolution is a tapestry of different forms, some leading to new species, while others are simply wonderful experiments in adaptation. <sighs> For millions of years, the fossils of Arda lay buried, a silent testimony to a pivotal moment in our past. A creature with feet perfectly adapted for grasping trees, yet a pelvis shaped for walking upright on the ground. Ardipithecus is a powerful reminder of the incredible journey our ancestors took from the forest canopy to the open savanna. It is the story of a species that first began to stand tall, not out of necessity, but as a new and daring way of life. It is the story of our transition from the trees to the ground, and it is here in the cradle of humankind that we find the evidence for these first bold steps. <laughs>